If you know a woodmaker, or if you are a woodmaker, you know, the worst nightmare is to do something with wood and make it curved. But in Blender, this is easier as you can see. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna teach you how to develop this curved wooden panel in Blender. So, if you'd like to know more about how to use Blender for architectural visualization, I invite you to subscribe to this YouTube channel and click the notification bell, so when I post new videos, you'll be awarded, okay? Without further ado, let's get started. So here I have an empty scene on Blender where I will delete everything, press Shift A and add a plane. This plane, we press N to go in the transform panel and we change the dimensions. The dimensions will, something, will be something like 5 centimeters by 2 centimeters. I think this is a good size for our panel. Well, let's invert this dimension. Let's put it in 2 centimeters by 5 centimeters. I think this will be easier to work if we work in the X axis. Blender is good in the X axis. <laughs> I don't know why they prioritize the X axis here in Blender. But anyway, let's go to the modifier properties panel. Let's add a modifier. And we can start by putting a array modifier to duplicate our object. Let's change the factor for two, and we can increase the count of our small object. We can also extrude it by pressing tab, enter the edit mode and extrude it in the Z axis for something like two meters. It's enough for our, for our example, okay? So as you can see, we can do something like that, but this is not efficient enough for, the, for our workflow. And when we work with architectural visualization, we want to be faster, we want to be as efficient. So to make it efficient, uh, I would like to show you a technique. Press Shift A and add a curve. We, we're gonna add a Bezier curve. This is a simple curve. Uh, just for the example, I will rotate it by 90 degrees here. So the curve will be totally straight and by selecting my object I'm going to change the fit type for fit curve so the fit type won't be fixed count will be fit curve now I'm gonna to select the curve I want to be the size of my object and as you can see nothing is happen why is nothing happen just look if we move our object the array modifier starts to work, but what's happening? The reason for that is simple. As you can see here in the scale of our object, the scale is wrong. So we need to apply the scale of our object because if you change this scale for this, this is just a cube as we started. So let's change it. To improve this, we're gonna just press Ctrl A to apply our scale. And now, as you can see, the size of our curve will be the size of our object. This is really, really, really good because we don't need to do any math to know how much of these pieces of wood we, we want to put there. We can just increase the size of this curve and we are done. Perfect. Something I like to do is to move this curve for the exact position of this object. To do that, I'm going to do something simple. I'm going to click here in this button called Options. I can also click here in tools here and click here in affect origins or options affect origins here is the same button as you can see both turn on when i click i put it in my quick menu i can just press q and click here and now i will change the snap of my object to vertex and move it pressing ctrl to the this part here now i can turn off this option and by Selecting my object, I will press Shift S and click the option cursor to select it. Now I'm gonna to select my curve, press Shift S, selection to cursor. And now my object is here in the same position of my wall. This will be really useful for our process right now because I want to make it curved. To do that, I'm gonna to add a modifier. And as you can see, I'm gonna add a curve modifier because we're going to add, make a curve, control the position of this object. So we can just select this, the only curve that we have in our scene. And when we select our curve, press tab to modify our curve. Now, every movement that we do with our curve, we change the way our 
object is looking, as you can see. So let's create a simple curved panel like that. As you can see, all movements that I made, that i done here, is change the way this object is looking. But as you can see, it's not that great because the resolution of our curve is a bit low. So we can go here in the curve properties and increase the resolution for something like 64. It's enough for our example, okay? Perfect. Right now, I'm gonna to rotate this like this and rotate this like this. I can increase the size here, increase the size here, whatever I want. Now I have a curved panel, as you can see. Let's change it a bit. Perfect. Now, to make the back side of this, this object, I'm gonna to select my front object, press Shift D to duplicate, right mouse button to put it in the same place, and I can just move it in the Y axis. I can snap it in any part here, whatever, something like that. And I can just move it and make it closer for my object. Now I can go to my um, modifier panel and I can change the factor of two and put it in one. Now I have a perfect wall behind my panel. And this is a panel with duplicated objects. So let's apply the modifier to make it perfect, okay? The first modifier that I want to apply here is the array modifier because the array modifier will make all these objects real. Now they are actually geometry on Blender. So, but when we can select it, as you can see, I can just press Ctrl L to select any part of my object. Everything is just separated all objects and this is it's not enough for our work. So I'm gonna to enter in the wireframe. I will delete all the top parts here, select everything. And as you can see, each part is a separated face but we can just press A to select everything, press M and click and merge by distance. Right now, a lot of vertices was removed in our scene, as you can see, and I can extrude it by two meters right now. If the object go down, just press minus in the keyboard and it will go up. Perfect. Now we have the back side of the wall. We can call this wooden back wall, I don't know, and this is the front side, we can call it wooden panels, I don't know, something like that, perfect. And as you can see, the, this is done for now, but this is not perfect at all, because now we can change the curve, whatever we want, it will affect both objects at the same time, perfect, because both objects are using the same curve in the modifier stack, but this is a bit too sharp on the edges. And as you can see in my final rendering, here the edges are a bit rounded. So let's use a bevel modifier to improve that. So let's click here in add modifier, bevel modifier. Let's increase the number of segments and let's reduce the amount. Two millimeters is enough. We can just press the right mouse button and click here in smooth shading. We can go here in shading, harden normals, go here in this panel, the object data properties, normals and outer smooth. And now it's looking great, it's looking great. We can do the same with this wall behind. So let's just do outer smooth, smooth shading and perfect. And now we have a perfect wall panel made in Blender, okay? And if you wanted to know how to develop the material for this object, I invite you to click in the video that's appear in the screen right now, and I will teach you how to develop the material for this object, okay? Well, if you wanted to know more about how to use Blender for Archivist, subscribe, notification bell, all that stuff, and I see you in our next video. Bye!